how to set super heat. So first thing we gotta do is gonna make sure our circuit is not in heat frost and it ain't. Next up, we're gonna go click on the circuit. We're gonna go to service. Okay, so C26A. All right, then we're gonna go down and what you're gonna do is, no matter what controller you're working on, you need to turn on the refrigeration manually. So you know that it's feeding, okay? So manu so auto on, we're gonna log in, okay? Not gonna tell you what that password is, no certainly. Then we're gonna manual it on. Important, you need to have flow of refrigerant through your system, okay? So what is that doing? Real quick, we're just gonna understand, right here, it engages this solenoid, it's a suction stop system. So now this is going good, all right? So now we're gonna go to the case. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our case specs, right, and we can see it's model 05Z12, okay? And it's um, a Hill Phoenix case, and uh, yeah, we're gonna find our case specs, which is typically on the top of the case, and then we're gonna, uh, set our superheat based off that case specs here, right? So what you can do is you can type in Hill Phoenix and then the case number into the Google and a link will come up and you download it. So I downloaded it onto my phone. So we're gonna go on to it, right? I'm gonna scroll through. This is your, you know, your installation manual. We're gonna go down, keep going, keep going. Here we are, electric data, guidelines and control settings. So we're in frozen, okay, parallel rack. Evaporator negative seven. I think this is actually set up for kind of like a combination between frozen and ice cream because it's targeting negative 10. And the superheat is three to five degrees. Okay, so we know that that's what we're targeting. Super heat. Okay, let will show you how to hook up to the superheat. So you hook up to the suction line down there. So that's after the coil. So after it goes through everything, this is returning back to the rack. So we're gonna hook up right there. I'm gonna put a temperature probe right there. Now you can put it right next to the sensing bulb, but there's no room, so it's not gonna have a huge difference from there to there, okay? Now from there, take a cap. Off of a TXP. So what is this measuring? So you have a theoretical temperature that corresponds to this PSI. And that temperature is negative 14, okay? And it's measuring, so the gas is going in at negative 14, and it's gonna come out on the other side 12 degrees warmer, okay? So we already know our superheat is three to five degrees, but you can see that the superheat's changing. So unfortunately, sometimes, based on your refrigerant, your TXV size, your TXV will hunt. And if it hunts, you gotta take the average of the two, the best that you can, to get the right superheat. So, what I recommend doing is looking at the other thing. You see the color that the black of the TXV. That lets you know how many turns you have. So, I'm going to do one full turn and see where I'm at. So, the left seems loosely, so we're bringing this out, which opens up the orifice. So, I'm going to turn it to the left. So, one, two, Three. Let's see. Still not quite there. Four. There we go. Previously, I'm gonna grab my marker. So previously, I got 15 and negative five, and now I'm gonna see what I get for a temperature. Um, we're gonna average it out, so that'd be equal super heat, a 10, because this valve is hunting. Um, this valve might be too big, might be too small. Um, I think typically when it's too big, it hunts. So there's all kinds of reasons it could be hunting. Typically it would just give you a value and you would just slowly turn it. But right now it's not doing that. So when it's hunting, we're gonna average it. All right, so I let it do its thing and it's running a little bit. You can see the superheat and the temperatures changing. So we're running refrigerant 507, 20 PSI, superheat, right? 
So I got a high of 16, I got a low right. Now it doesn't do negative superheat. So what you have to do is you have to take the actual EVAP temperature, which is 15.7 at the time, minus the actual temperature, which was, this was negative 15 and this one was negative uh, 26.7. So there was a negative 11 degree difference between those two. And so negative 11, if I average that with six, you know, so negative 11 plus 16 will give me five. And I divide that by two, I'm gonna get 2.5. So I have a superheat of 2.5 because I average those two values. Um, so superheat of a negative 11 means it's 11 degrees colder than this value that should be given to you by the pressure. So now we're gonna go back to the rack. Okay, after we're done with the case, we're now gonna check the superheat at the rack. Okay, so this is the system line right here. Okay, we're hooked up here. My temperature probe is snaked down into here, and we can see them right now. The superheat is 42. Okay. At the rack. So what should it be? So if you go to Copeland uh, Discus Compressors, you know, you just type it into the Google. Type in uh, Discus Compressor 3D Compressor Service Manual, right? We're going to go to page 27. 27. The suction superheat should not fall below 10K. So that's Calvin, which is about 22.5 degrees. So we're at, right now we're at 39. So I think that's gonna be acceptable. Um, you know, you want it, as far as I've seen and I've read in their bulletins, you want it as close to that 10K as possible. Um, that's about 22.5 degrees or 20 degrees I've seen Fahrenheit. You want it as close to that as you can get. But the case is running correctly, the rack is running correctly, and a lot of the newer press compressors have demand cooling. So the reason why you want it close to that superheat is so the refrigerant can cool it as it goes into the compressor. But a lot of the newer ones have a demand cooling or vapor cooling or vapor injection or something to cool off the compressor. So um, that's not as much of a concern, but still. You want it as close to this as possible. So now we know the case superheat is set up right. And then the refrigerant coming back to the rack will not feed liquid to the compressor which would cause the compressor to break. So we have successfully um, set superheat for the system.